Okay, thank you everyone for being here. It is my pleasure to uh, introduce you to uh, Paulina Figueroa. She's an associate professor of the DAM. And I've met uh, Paulina a few years ago, about uh, 10 years ago. <laughs> and uh, we have many, many beautiful stories together as colleagues, as friends. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, uh, she uh, introduced me to my master's and PhD uh, advisor. <laughs> she uh, doomed him. <laughs> <laughs> so, Paulina, it's all yours. Thank you, Paulina, for being here. Well, thank you very much for uh, the um, organizing committee to invite me to this event. Thank you very much, Julian. I love you so much. You know that. I will start with my presentation. Wait a minute. I need to, yes. Well, today I will talk about the crossing number, a twisted life. I will start with very basic observation that graphs are very discrete objects. I will give an example of a graph, like the Facebook graph. Why? Because I'm old, I'm still having a Facebook profile. A graph is just a set B of vertices. We can say the set of profiles in Facebook. And each profile, or each vertex has some ad adjacent vertices. Then we have a relation. This relation, like in Facebook, is anti-reflexive. I mean, if you look, for example, in the profile of Rita, because she's old as, as me, so she has Facebook too. If you, if you see her profile, you will see that Rita doesn't appear in the list of, of her friends. So Rita is not related with Rita. And this relationship is also symmetric because if Rita is my friend in Facebook, then I am her friend. So since the relationship is symmetric, instead of writing these two ordered pairs, we just write a set containing Rita at, and me. And we will say that this is an edge. So we have a set of vertices and a set of edges consisting of sets with pairs of profiles in the case of the Facebook graph. And instead of writing this uh, huge notation, and um, sometimes we rewrite it as this. Well, it is natural if, if we are uh, working with graphs to represent them by a, using a drawing. That is, I will put one vertex, one point for each vertex and uh, simple curve join those vertices if Anna and Rita, for example, are related. Mm -hmm. And here I start to work with geometry because these simple curves can intersect in their interiors. So when I have a drawing, I can count the number of times of these crossings. And I can define then the crossing number of a graph. The crossing number of a graph, G, is the lowest number of edge crossings in a plane drawing of a graph, G. For example, here I have G K equal to K4. That is four vertices, and I have all possible edges between those, uh, between every two vertices. 
I have different drawings of this. I can have different drawings of this graph, for example, this one, and I can count the number of crossings. Here, the number of crossings is one, but I can also write, uh, draw K4 like this. So in this drawing, as you notice, there are no edge crossings. Since the crossing number is the lowest number of edge crossings, then I can say that the crossing number of K4 is zero, right? This problem started with the brick factory problem. In July 1944, a Hungarian mathematician, Paul Turan, write uh, a letter to his friend, Richard Guy. And here I put some things in that uh, was written in that letter. For example, in July 1994, the danger of deportation was real in Budapest. We work near Budapest in a brick factory. There were some cleans where the bricks were made. Here you have the cleans. And some open storage yards where the bricks were stored. Here are the store yards. And all the cleans were connected by rail with all the store yards. The bricks were carried on some small wheel trucks to the storage yards. Mm -hmm. The trouble was only in the crossings. The trucks generally jumped in the rails there and the bricks fell out of them. In short, this causes a lot of trouble and loss of time, which was rather precious to all of us for reasons not to be discussed here. The idea occurred to me that this loss of time could have been minimized if the number of crossings of the rails had been minimized. But what is the minimum number of crossings? I realized after several days that the actual situation could have been improved, but the exact solution of the general problem of M cleans and N storages seems to be very difficult. So we, here we have a problem that, well, I think it, it's not really applied because it, it is in World War II, the cleans were already uh, built, the storage yards were already built, but here you have these mathematicians who could um, ask himself about a mathematical problem about these crossing numbers. So, which is the, the general problem he mentioned? Well, you have um, <clears throat> this graph, which is the bipartite graph with N and M vertices, the complete bipartite graph. In this bipartite graph, you have the vertices split into two sets, A and B. A, have, A has uh, M vertices, B has and vertices between every pair of, verte of, of vertices in A, there is no edge. Also between every pair of vertices in B, there is no edge. But you have every edge from a vertex of A and a vertex of B. That's a bipartite complete graph. So, Turan was asking about the crossing number of this bipartite graph in general. In 1955, Sarankiewicz made this uh, drawing. As you can see, this is another drawing of K and M where A is drawn in this line here we have a, more or less like a half of the vertices of A, the half of the vertices of A, and B is drawn in this other perpendicular line. Here you have more or less the uh, half of the vertices of B, and you joined every um, 
every point of A with every point of B by a straight line segment. Yes. So you can say that the crossing number of the bipartite complete graph is less or equal than this number, which is the number of crossings in this drawing. Sarankiewicz in, in his uh, article also um, gave a proof of this uh, result that this was equal, but it was Guy that found a gap in that proof. Guy also proved that um, this equality is true for K, M, N, where M is less or equal than four. And there has been, there have been a lot of efforts trying to prove uh, the equality for many other cases. But the best result we know about this is this one, that the limit of when N goes to infinity of the crossing number of a bipartite graph over this number is this. It's not a lot. It's a very, very difficult problem. Okay. Well, everyone's believe that this is a good, the, the, the good drawing of K and M that minimizes the number of, of crossings. Now, I want to, to talk about a second um, place where the crossing number appeared. It appeared with this man. His name is Tom Layton. He is the CEO of Akamai Technologies, that is a global content delivery network, cybersecurity, cloud service company. It's a huge company that gives service to Microsoft, to Google, to Mac, etc. It's he's a very rich man. He's also a professor of MIT, and I hate him because he claims in every class when he talks about graph theory in this open course web that people who know graph theory becomes rich. Well. In 1971, PhD in his PhD thesis, he studied the complexity issues of the BLSI problem. That is the, the very large scale integration problem. This is the process of creating an integrated circuit by combining thousands of, transistor in, in a, of transistors in a chip. Of course, if you have a lot of crossings in, in, in that uh, chip, then the, the, the chip is not efficient. So he started to, to, to think about this uh, crossing number concept unaware of Turan's pro probably, and developed some techniques of bounding the crossing number, including a very nice result calling that calls the crossing lemma that I will talk later. And this history is very nice because he, he makes a connection because, between crossing number and this very scale integration that it's very applicable nowadays. The third origin of this uh, crossing number concept is was with the British artist Anthony Hill. Anthony Hill explored the crossing number of the complete graphs unaware also of the brick factory problem. Um, Indeed, Ertos claimed that in 1960, he had been thinking about a problem for the last 20 years, but many people think that was Anthony Hill who started thinking about this problem. It was with Blazek and Coleman that 
they could find a good uh, a drawing, this drawing of KN, that they think it minimizes the number of crossings. I will, and, and this, this uh, drawing has this exact number of crossings here that we call C of N. I will tell you how they constructed. Well, if you have, if you want to construct here, you have one of those two, K11, then you have to split the vertices into two halves. And you put in a circle, an interior circle, more or less the half of the vertices, and then in an exterior circle, more or less the other half of the vertices. Then you join two vertices of the exterior circle with an arc that is outside. Yes? Two vertices in the interior circle are joined just by a straight line and two vertices, one in the exterior circle and one in the, in the interior circle are joined with the, a curve that is the shortest as possible. And that's uh, the drawing of KN that they think is the one that minimizes minimize the number of crossings. Guy proved that conjecture was valid for n less or equal than 10. Then Pan and Richter in 2007 extended this conjecture to n less or equal than 12. But here is the best result we know about this conjecture. Again, we have this problem, very, well, not at all, but an old problem where you have a example that you think that minimizes the number of crossings, but no one can prove that's true. Now I want to talk about this uh, crossing lemma that I, that I talked before. This is a bound of the number of crossings. Well, you have several bounds of the number of crossings in general, but this crossing lemma is for graphs that has enough edges. Let's say that you have more than four n edges, then you can say that the number of crossings is greater or equal than a constant that we call a crossing lemma constant. And um, times the number of uh, edges to the cube over the number of vertices to square. And it, this bound is tied a part of C, yes? It was proved first by Leighton and Achtal, Schwatal, Newborn, Semeridi. These are a, like a we can say a Hungarian group that proved that result and Leighton was uh, unaware of that. But more or less at the same time, they, they proved that result. And the first constant they have was like one over 100. Then there was a very nice um, and elegant argument to prove that this constant is more or less like one over 64. It was improved also by uh, Todd and Pag. But the best now, the best bound um, proof until now is Ackerman's bound. That in 2019, after many, many papers improving and improving this uh, constant, the best constant we know till now is one over 20 now. If M is greater or equal than seven times the number of vertices. Why this result is so important? Well, in 1997, Seke wrote this wonderful paper crossing number and her Erdos problem in discrete geometry. When I read this um, 
article, I totally fall in love. In this article, he gave a very simple proofs of important theorems in incidence geometry, like the semi distrother theorem and among others. And all the, his proofs are like one paragraph proofs using the crossing lemma. So I really like this kind of, of work where many uh, theorems uh, having to use a huge um, and difficult um, techniques to prove was proven in one paragraph with this crossing lemma. So I recommend you to read this. It's a very nice article. Well, if I have if I haven't convinced you yet that the crossing lemma is that the crossing number problem is difficult, then I have to tell you that the crossing number is not only difficult but cruel. Let me think about very, very basic problem. A graph is said to be planar if it can grow if it can be drawn in the plane so that no edge cross, like K4 we've seen before. Here you have this theorem that is a very basic theorem that we prove in every basic course of graph theory that says that a graph is planar if it hasn't a subdivision of K33 and or K5. And it is known that to find this kind of subgraphs that, which are subdivision of K33 or K5 can be done in polynomial time. But what happened if we, instead of, of thinking about planar graphs, we think about near planar graphs? I have a graph, I will say that the graph is near planar if it can be obtained for a planar graph just by adding an extra edge. For example, this graph is K33. It follows the rules of the that drawing I gave you before. This is K33. And it's a near planar graph because it can be obtained by the purple graph just by adding one edge, which I draw in red. Yes. And here we have a K5, which is also a near planar graph because can be drawn, uh, can be obtained of the red, uh, of the red, planar graph just by adding this edge. Yes. The first thing I have to point out is that near planar graphs are not simple as we may think. For example, they have arbitrarily large crossing number. So it is, it sounds like a very acceptable problem to think about uh, recognizing these near planar graphs. And in fact, I heard some um, talks of my colleague, Helasio Salazar, that he was working with Hilani about thinking um, about the problem, uh, about this problem in order to design a polynomial time algorithm. But it turns out that in 2012, Cabello and Mohar prove that it is NP hard to compute the crossing number of a near planar graph. This, was a, this is a very surprising um, result. Imagine that. Also, they prove in, in the same article that the crossing number is NP complete even when restricted to cubic graphs. Cubic graphs are graphs that in each vertex, each, each vertex is incident only 
to three edges. So if you're trying to compute the, um, the crossing number and you think maybe I should bound then the, um, the uh, regularity or something like that, you are lost. This is an MP complete problem. So really crossing number is terrible. But it is nice also because you can, as I said before, you can think about other problems in geometry using crossing number. For example, this problem I like so much. Erdos um, had this problem that for a given set of points in the plane, he asked what is the minimum possible number of four tuples that are in convex position. For example, I have this uh, set of points and then there are four tuples that, for, that uh, are in convex position like this one. And there are four tuples that are not in convex position like this one. One, this one. Yes. So he asked about if I can count them. And this is a very nice problem because if you draw all the possible lines between any two points, then you can notice that if you have four points in convex position, then you will find only one crossing. But if you have four points that are not in convex position, then in that graph, you will not have any crossing. So it seems that there is a rejection between crossings and points in and four points in convex position. So what do you think? Do you think this is the crossing uh, problem or not? Well, it isn't. It's very related, but it isn't because here I'm asking you to, to draw every edge like a straight segment, a straight light segment. But if I allow to draw the edges with just a simple arcs, then I can have four points in convex position and no crossings. But this is a very um, related problem that it calls the rectilinear crossing number. Yes, we restrict the edges to be a straight, a straight like segments. segments. So there is a difference between those drawings where I restrict the edges to be straight light segments than just let them to be any simple curve. So I will say that a geometric graph is a drawing in which every pair of vertex is well, not, not everyone, but if you have an edge, that it, it must be drawn like the, the with a um, straight like segment. And a topological graph is a drawing, as I was thinking about it in the beginning of the talk. Now, I will, I, I want to talk you, I, I want to tell you about a new result. I've been working with uh, some very esteemed colleagues, um, Silvia Fernandez Menchant, uh, Eduardo Rivera Campo, uh, Bernardo Abrego, and Juan Jose Montellano. But 
in order to do that, I have to give you some more definitions. So be patient. If G and H are topological graphs, we say that G and H are weakly isomorphic if and only if. They are isomorphic, that is, there exists a bijection between the vertices of G and the vertices of H in which every two pair of vertices that which are adjacent are adjacent if and only if their images are also adjacent. Yes, that's uh, the concept as we know classically. But I will ask also that if U B crosses X Y, then the image of the H U B will cross the image of the H X Y. Here I have an example. This is, this was K three three, right? And I will say this drawing is um, weakly isomorphic to this. Yes, this drawing or this um, topological graph, because I have this uh, isomorphism for which if an edge cross, then the respect images also cross, right? Now, I, I have to tell you about um, Erdos-Sekerst theorem. For every n, there exists maybe a huge number fn of point such that if you have this large number of points, fn points, then you will have at least n of these points in convex position. This is a very beautiful, oh, this is a very beautiful theory. Here I have an example. For example, we know that F4 is five, because if you have five points in the plane in general position, like, well, this is mainly how these five points will give, behave. Yes. Then in every five points in general position, you will have four points in convex position. In the first example, we will have these four points in convex position. The second example, these four points in convex position. In the third example, we have these four points in convex position. Right? So we can also write Erdos-Sekeri's theorem using geometric graphs. How can I do that? Erdos Sekeres theorem will say, for every n, there exists a number fn just like this, such that every geometric graph, that is, I will, I, I will say a geometric graph is a drawing in which every edge is drawn by a uh, straight like cement. So every geometric graph with at least Fn vertices has a subgraph of N vertices of N vertices which is uh, 
the complete graph of n vertices in which all, every vertex is in convex position. And its vertices are in convex position, in, in convex position. Yes. This result and this is result is exactly the same. For, for example, in this example, you have, if I have a complete geometric graph of five points, then I obtain these three cases, right? Mainly. And in every complete graph with F and vertices, like this, five vertices, I can find a sub, uh, a complete subgraph such that its vertices are in convex position. The same just with another, it's another way to say it. Right? So what happened if we asked about this problem, but instead of thinking about geometric graphs, we think about topological graphs. Is that true that there exists a huge amount of vertices such that a complete topological graph with this amount of vertices must have a complete graph of n vertices weakly isomorphic to a convex geometric complete graph? Well, it turns out that that's not true. It turns out that there exist topological graphs like this, that was, the name is twisted, complete graph. that doesn't have a convex geometry, a convex uh, complete graph that is weakly, weakly isomorphic to a complete graph in convex position with five vertices, yes? So uh, Janos Bach and Gesatot proved this other result that we call the Erdos-Secker theorem, but for topological graphs. That it says for every n, there exists a huge number of vertices such that every topological graph with at least that number of vertices has a subgraph of n vertices weakly isomorphic to this graph, this topological graph, or the twisted topological graph. Okay, so we, um, Lalo Rivera Campo was working with this uh, twisted uh, topological graphs and trying to find uh, their structure um, he has an article with Ersa Omaña Pulido, studying all, all that kind of things. And we started with, to work with um, Silvia and Bernardo, who are experts of uh, crossing number. 
And the first uh, problem with thought that it was that maybe we can uh, find some uh, nice uh, lemma, crossing lemma constant for this uh, family of topological graphs, because it's a very difficult problem. And there is a few known about uh, families of topological graphs, which is their crossing number. But surprisingly, we were able not only to find that crossing constant, but to know exactly what is the crossing number of every topological subgraph of this twisted graph with n vertices and m edges. We were able, able to compute this also by first of all by finding a good example for which we thought uh, the crossing number was minimized. Of course, we, we couldn't see anything from this drawing, so we had to make a different um, representation. But this representation is very simple. For example, you have here in this uh, graph, vertices from one to six. And I will put a dot here if the edge from one to two is wrong. And I will put a cross if there is no edge from one to five, like just like this drawing. So by doing this, we have the representation of every subgraphs of the complete twisted graph. And the um, example that we thought it was uh, the minima is put every um, edge just in the diagonals until you end up with the edges like this. Here I have 12 edges and six points. So if I count the number of crossings in this uh, topological graph, I will obtain this number. And the difficult part was to see every other possible uh, subgraph with n vertices and m edges and prove that these will contain more or equal crossings than this example of drawing. And well, I think I end here. Thank you. Thank you, Paulina. Um, does Thank anybody, you. anybody Thank you. have uh, a question? I think we have question in the chat, Juli. Ah, yes. Uh, Vinicio Gomez says, are there known the graph which have a crossing number one? Are there known the graph? No. No, no, no. It is also, are there known the graphs which have crossing number one? No, I think not. Uh, he yeah. says also that it was a nice talk. Uh, thank <laughs> you. Yeah. Very nice, um, Paulina, thank you. Thank you. We thank have you. a comment from Rihanna mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and on YouTube. She says mm -hmm. she wished it was true that all graph theorists become rich. <laughs> Me too. That's why I, I'm very mad with this guy. <laughs> and I have one question. Why did you think uh, that it was uh, 
you were you were able to uh, compute the constant of the uh, crossing lemma in this family, but uh, not on other family. I don't know. I, I, it 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 was really amazing because um, because Bernardo and Silvia were also working at the same time. Uh, in the problem of computing the crossing number of every possible subgraphs of the uh, convex um, topological graph. Yes. And they have all the knowledge about this and they can compute the exact constant until I, I know, I don't know, probably Probably they have found it, but until the last time I talked with them, they couldn't find it. Thank you, Paulina. Um, um, wait a second. Laura Pastrana on Facebook says, Saludos, Pau. Bonita plática. Gracias, Lau. And I think that's all the questions and comments that we have here. Okay. <laughs> then I will like to thank you again, Paulina, for this beautiful talk. It was really, really good talk. Thank you. Thank you, you Holly. Thank you. And uh, now to uh, finish Thank you, Magda. Thank you, Len. <laughs> this event, um, we are going to uh, put a, a small video um, for the ending of the this edition of CART 2020. Um, I will stop your screen sharing, Paulina. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. There it is. Welcome everyone to this closing video of CARD 2020. We hope you have enjoyed this year's edition. To end the activities of the event, let's hear a few words from our organizers. Dear all, here we are almost at the end of our conference about combinatorics and related topics. I would like to thanks again to all of our invited speakers for their valuable talks, for interesting talks. I hope that a lot of us found motivation and inspiration for the future work. Moreover, I want to thank all the participants, especially those who prepared posters and who recorded uh, movies and videos with their talks. Finally, I want to thank to all the organizing committee, uh, especially to Rita, Jan and Jan. Without you, it could be not possible to organize CART this year. I hope every, everybody enjoyed the conference and liked the conference and, uh, and to see you again next year or in the future. Best regards. Espero verte en la próxima conferencia. Saludos y besos. I mam nadzieję, że Państwo podobała się konferencja, że Państwo wynieśli wiele ciekawych tutaj nowych doświadczeń z tej konferencji, wiele się nauczyli i mam nadzieję do zobaczenia w przyszłych edycjach Hola a todos, pues hemos llegado al final de este CART 2020. Eh, esperamos que haya sido de su agrado. Como ustedes saben, esto de la modalidad virtual puede ser un poquito complicado, pero intentamos hacer un gran esfuerzo que fuera bastante ameno, bastante sencillo y uh, un lenguaje. <risa> eh, les espero que hayan disfrutado mucho y les doy un agradecimiento a todos los invitados, a todos los que enviaron sus pósters, sus videos, están padrísimos, me gustaron muchísimo. 
Sí, sobre todo también me gustaría agradecer a un trabajador por toda la labor que siempre hicieron. Y por último, un especial agradecimiento a mi amigo Osvaldo y que me ayudó a la parte de la edición, hizo los, eh, los pósters y un montón de cosas súper buenas. Muchísimas gracias. Y bueno, esperemos que nos veamos el próximo. Dzisiaj nasze spotkania online w dobie pandemii niestety do takiej formy zostaliśmy zmuszeni. Mam nadzieję, że już kolejne będziemy mogli się podziwić. wszystkim zaproszonym gościom za referaty, za przybliżenie nam swojej tematyki. Mam nadzieję, że te referaty bardzo Wam się podobały. Dziękuję również pozostałym uczestnikom konferencji. Przesłaliście również bardzo ciekawe wideo, prezentacje czy postery. Chciałabym tutaj w tym miejscu bardzo podziękować Julianowi, Lanowi, Ricie, główny trzon Komitetu Organizacyjnego za wykonanie wspaniałej pracy, za to, że wszystko się udało technologicznie i myślę, że nie tylko. Bardzo, bardzo Wam dziękuję i do zobaczenia w przyszłym roku. This was an exciting week. I think we have a great combinatorics and related topics conference 2020. And in fact, we found new ways to do incredible things under the actual circumstances. And beyond that, it was an amazing experience. I thank the invited speakers, the event, Rayana, Bernardo, Diana, and Paulina. Thank all the persons who sent their contributed video talks and video posters, and thank all the attendees. This conference was made thinking of you. Finally, I thank my colleagues in the organizing committee, and I want to say that Julian made an astounding work Thank you very much, Julia. Chciałabym bardzo Wam wszystkim podziękować, drodzy uczestnicy, za obecność. Bardzo się cieszę, że w tym roku udało nam się spotkać w tak szerokim gronie. Dziękuję również wszystkim współorganizatorom. Fantastycznie się z Wami pracowało i mam nadzieję, że spotkamy się w podobnym gronie za rok. Muchas gracias a todos los participantes que decidieron a participar en nuestro congreso. Gracias a invitados y a todos que enviaron posters y videos. So, I hope to see you again the next, next year. Hola. Pues bueno, todo principio tiene un fin. Y hemos llegado al fin de nuestro CAR 2020. Nuevamente quiero darle las gracias a todo el equipo organizador, a Magda Lemanska, Magda de Tlaf, Hannah Formanki, Milan Golfeder, y un especial, especial agradecimiento a Julián Fresán, quien estuvo a cargo de toda la cuestión eh, técnica y de comunicación. Nuevamente, gracias a nuestros conferencistas invitados, quienes presentaron unas bellísimas pláticas, Diden, Diana, Rihanna, Bernardo y Paulina. También a todos aquellos que eh, colaboraron con sus eh, videos y sus pósters. Muchísimas gracias. Finalmente, gracias a todos ustedes por habernos acompañado y los esperamos el próximo año 2021. Hasta la próxima. With this we end the event. We hope to see you in the next editions. Take care and see you next year. So, with this we end the event. I don't know if someone of the organizing committee wants to uh, add something. <laughs> well, I think mm -hmm. we finished. <laughs> okay. So, just to keep with the uh, this new uh, tradition, Paulina, it's your turn, but now to say, uh, to wish everyone <laughs> a good year and to uh, say, uh, you hope that everyone joins us in the next edition of the card the, the next year, but in your language. <laughs> Los esperamos el próximo año. Aquí siempre estamos <laughs> <laughs> en este gran evento. <laughs>
Thank you, Paulina. Thank and, you. Well, that would be all. See you next year. Thank you. See you. Adios a todos. Hasta la próxima. Adios. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you for everything. And of course, I'm waiting for the next edition. See you ne next time, next year. <laughs> Thank you, Professor Top. Bye. Bye. Bye bye.